Hey guys, Spidus here, and today I bring you a new video about a Fireball Miner Saboteur. We've reached level 87 with it. For the bandits, we've helped Alira for a critical strike multiplier and some resists. First ascendancy of all was Born in the Shadows. Pretty nice ascendancy, defensively speaking. Gives us uh, the, the ability to blind nearby enemies just to stay, just by staying close to them. It's pretty nice, pretty good, and we also have increased damage against blinded enemies. 25% uh, to blind enemies on hit, so we can even blind the enemies that are uh, far uh, from us. And also reduce the damage taken from blinded enemies. Very nice. Also second ascendancy Pyromaniac, we are immune to ignite and shock, and also we regenerate life uh, per mine detonated recently and also we have reduced mana reservation per mine uh, that we are putting on the ground then bomb specialist very nice aoe so more damage and explosive expert uh, so we can get more aoe reduced area damage taken from hits critical strike multiplier against burning enemies critical strike chance uh, against shocked enemies and elemental pain against chill enemies our skitter bots is capable of chilling and shocking the enemy, so we are very, very safe by using this, these four ascendancy points. For the tree, I went this way, got some damage here, some damage, damage. Uh, these nodes are very nice. This one gives us power charge when detonating mines. This one is quite nice also, very nice quality of life because it gives five seconds to uh, for the mine to stay there before being destroyed by the enemy so very nice quality of life so more damage more damage here more life acro phase acro very nice and then we went we went all this way to get some more life critical strike multiplier and uh, chance and multiplier uh, and these nodes here for the jewels this jewel here is very important rolling flames uh, we could get a Corrupted Blood 1 for 15 chaos, pretty cheap in my opinion. And this makes the Fireball Radius AoE increase as they travel further. So it's very nice quality of life as well. You should have this duel. Uh, I don't know about the prices in the future, but a Corrupted Blood now with 14% was 10 chaos, 15 chaos, I, I don't quite remember, but it was quite cheap. So very nice duel for you to get. Other than that, you should aim for increased maximum life, critical strike multiplier with elemental skills, uh, for spell, for spells, uh, for general multiplier, also very nice, and some mine damage or fire damage as well. Like this one, this one has mine damage, maximum life in multiplier. This one is the same, and this one is the same, as you can see. Okay. So for the gear, for the gear, Tremor Rod is an amazing weapon for this build, giving us plus two level of socketed spell gems, which increases our damage by a lot since Fireball is a spell. Very nice. Mines can be detonated an additional time. Very nice as well. Plenty of spell damage, and it's basically a seven link because it's socketed by a level ten Blast Chain Mine. Very nice. For the chest, we chose a Chaos Heart uh, because we are life based. We even got some Corrupted that saved our mediocre uh, increased fire damage roll, which is pretty low, but it's overall after this corruption, it's, it's okay. For the helmet, we chose Crown of the Inward Eye. I believe this helmet is very nice to have, gives us plenty of life, but also has the transfiguration property this is the helmet dropped by Cyrus, which is quite nice to use uh, because it was launched at this league. And Transfiguration property works as this. Transfiguration uh, means that increasing reductions to something will apply increasing reductions to something else at 30% of its value. So Transfiguration of Soul, for example, means that increasing reductions to energy shield will apply uh, increase the reductions to spell damage at 30% of its value. So if you increase your energy shield by 100, 
uh, you will gain 30% increased spell damage, which is quite nice. Also, body is the same, doesn't work for our build because uh, as we raise our life means increases uh, to attack damage, so it doesn't matter. But Transfiguration of Mind is very nice because increasing reductions to mana uh, apply increased reductions to our damage at 30% of its value. So quite nice helmet to use for this build. This ring, Snake Pit, is very nice as well because uh, when it's socketed on our left left ring slot, means that projectiles on spell from spells cannot chain, but they can fork. They will fork 100% of the time. This means that every time you launch a fireball, as soon as it hits the enemy, it will fork. So it will split into two projectiles, which is very nice for a clear speed and shotgunning bosses against the walls. For the other ring, Circle of Anguish, if you can get a nice implicit like this one, it's very nice, uh, such as increased damage, but most important role here are those two uh, last explicits, which are increased fire damage while affected by Herald of Ash, and also Herald of Ash has increased buff effect. This will boost our fire damage by a lot, so make sure you get these two lines here. Our amulet, oops, our amulet has some global critical strike multiplier, some resist, some life, and plus level of all fire skill gems. This will increase our fireball again, level again, which is very nice. Our boots, a pretty common boots. Uh, you can have uh, movement speed, some resistance, some life here. Oh, speaking of the anoint, I chose to go for Whispers of Doom because of the gloves here. The gloves here, I think it was uh, the most expensive part of the build because I wanted to spend some more money to see how far we could go with this build uh, by taking advantage of some defensive and uh, offensive mechanics at the same time. As you can see here, we have plus one socketed gems, curse enemies with elemental weakness and enfeeble on hit, so two curses and spells have crit chance. This is quite nice for defensive, uh, for offensive mechanics because gives us a elemental weakness, which boosts our damage by a lot, and also increases our crit chance uh, by a bunch, as well as having the plus one stock the gems, which will affect the Herald of Ash. And this is why I got Whispers of Doom for the Anointment, so you can have both elemental weakness and enfeeble curses. If you don't want to have two curses, you can get this counterweight, which is quite cheap and quite nice for the build since it gives us crit chance and global critical strike multiplier while wielding staffs. Alright, for the belt, you can get yourself a Stygian Vise with some life, some fire damage and some resists. You can also have some increased elemental damage if you can and if you can afford it. For the flasks, a life flask, diamond flask, and dream mana flask, quite nice quality of life when you're placing mines and detonating them, which will which will not make the uh, mana mana recovery end uh, even when your mana is full. And also, most important of all, is the dying sun. This changed the build. I was leveling with arc mines until I got a dying sun for myself. I can guarantee you, it, your life will get a lot better as soon as you get this flask, because you can see here, once you detonate uh, a mine, it will fire a single projectile. But if you use a dying sun, it will give you two extra projectiles for every fireball. So, and it also increases the AOE effect. So this will help you clear uh, maps a lot faster and also helps you shotgun bosses against the walls. Pretty nice. Okay, and also a Quicksilver Flask for your movementation. Talking about gems, uh, for the single target and mapping, we have Fire Pen, Fireball 2123, was quite cheap. 15 chaos for a Vol Fireball 2123. Uh, plus two from the weapon and plus one from the amulet. Quite nice. And quite a lot of damage. Look at that. Level 24 Fireball having 
1665 to almost two and a half K fire damage. This is this is incredible. <laughs> Trap and mine damage to Bart, control destruction, swift assembly. You can also swap to minefield if you like it, but I don't like minefield because it's a lot clunky to play. Uh, clunky. If you use swift assembly, you can place mines and keep keep walking and placing them all the time. If you use uh, mine fuel, you will see that you throw lots of mines and then you can walk and then you have to throw all the mines again. So it's a lot clunkier to play. I don't recommend it, but you can if you feel like playing it. Uh, and also last link combustion. Another four link is Castrian damage taken, steel skin, increased duration with Vol Righteous Fire. This will increase your uh, spell damage by a lot. You can also use for a single target pyro class mines. I I don't feel. I mean, while I was playing it, I was capable of killing everything with fireball. Fireball's base damage is so big that you don't actually need the pyro class. But it was very useful while leveling. I mean, pyro class saved us when playing arc mines. Arc mines is very nice for a boss as well. But it was I, it felt better while leveling. But you can also use and swap uh, on any game bosses if you feel like doing it. You can also use Arcane Surge with Flame Dash and uh, E Portal. And for our Auras, Herald of Ash and Hands to increase the quality of the Herald of Ash and boost our fire damage. And Lighten and Summon Skitterbots. These will always shock and chill the enemy, which will grant us the benefit from the Ascendancy node here. Okay, and also makes the fights uh, and mapping a lot more uh, easy for us because the enemies are ch constantly being chilled. These plus one socket gems also affect the Herald of Ash and the gems here, so it's quite nice. Our Enlightening 3 becomes the Enlightening 4. Our Summer Bot, Summer Skitter Bots also receives another level, so it's pretty nice and pretty nice quality of life. Okay, you can also I, rem I just remember this. You can also swap the the flask if you feel like you need more damage. Your quicksilver for a wise oak. Just remember and to make sure your fire res is always uh, the highest of your resistances, so you can benefit yourself from the penetration resist uh, from the wise oak. All right. So overall speaking. This build felt amazing. Just remember when you're playing to place the boss, if you can, against a wall. So place all the mines here. And imagine that the boss is here. All the fireballs, as you saw on the clips, will fire against the boss. And the explosions against the wall will overlap, increasing your damage by a lot. Very similar to what the KB used to be. Kinetic Blast. And I had so much fun. Uh, this build will cost me around 15 exalts. You can get a very, very cheaper gloves than this for around two or three exalts, probably, if you, or maybe one exalt if you want just elemental weakness or something like that. But overall speaking, it was fun, fun to map, fun to uh, to kill the bosses very fast, as you as you've seen on the clips. And I enjoyed this video. I recommend this build for you guys. Okay. Uh, so I made I made this video in a bit different format this time. Please let me know in the comments if you liked it or what your thoughts about it. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and see you next time. <laughs> What's this? A real challenge. You finally caught my attention. Watch Yuki Crumble! You are the others found strength in their projections. They became reliant on it.
Have you dropped something good, Speedos? Yeah, sometimes, I think. From 120 Cyrus, dropped 4 Legion Swords. Not bad, I mean. 